at Southpaw's Specialty Hospital in Melbourne. Come on, this way, come on. One-year-old Bruno has arrived with his loving owners Andrew and Cassandra for surgery on a severely deformed front leg. Hey Bruno, that's all right. We got Bruno about 10 months ago and then he fractured his paw at around three months. He had a cast on, it healed properly. We thought it was all okay. And then about a month after the cast came off, we started noticing the malrotation of his paw. Oh, hi, yeah, okay. Hello, yes, hi. I love you too. He was running down the hallway one day and we're like, oh, that's weird that he looks like he's running at an angle, but it's actually just the paw sort of flicking mm. out. Morning, guys. Do you want to come through with Bruno? We'll take a look. Oh, come on, Bruno. We've got to go in. Yeah. Come on, Bruno. Just come in and we'll grab a seat. Come on, Bruno. Yeah, Co-owner of South Paws, Dr. James, will attempt to fix the complex bone abnormality in Bruno's foot. It's literally coming out in a 90 degree angle there. So that's what we're going to try and correct in the surgery to straighten that leg out. His angular change is pretty much as bad as they get. When you look at him every day, you would feel sorry for him, I think, and you can see that he's clearly affected the way he can ambulate. As we talked about, we are going to correct his leg today. We're going to do that in a single surgery. It's going to involve cutting his bone in the radius and the ulna, and then we're going to straighten that leg out, and then we're going to put a plate on there. So what we're going to do is not only correct that angulation, but we are also going to incorporate a fusion of the wrist joint effectively as well. We would absolutely do anything for mm. Bruno just to help him live the best life that he can. We all very much miss him when he's not in the house. Mm. And yeah, definitely could not imagine life without him. Yeah, because he's our baby. Yeah. yeah. So how's he been getting on? Yeah, it's been doing okay. Yeah. Um, definitely that paw's looking a lot worse. Yeah. The angulation maybe looks a little bit worse from when we saw him last time. Not long after Bruno became an irreplaceable part of their family, Cassandra and Andrew welcomed their other baby, Raphael. They've already got such a connection and they look out for each other and Bruno's such a protector of his little brother. Good boy, Bruno, kiss. Good boy, kiss. Now he just can't stop licking him all over the face and follows him wherever he's going and just sits by his cot and is always looking out for him. He's just full of love. He's a ball yeah. of love. Oh, good boy, gentle. Mm. There you go. Ten-month-old Raphael is a major part of why Andrew and Cassandra are desperate to see their Bernese Mountain Dog Poodle Cross regain full health. Good boy, Bruno. Good boy, darling. Hopefully this is the only time we'll need to do major surgery with him and Raphael and Bruno can run a riot. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. It all goes well, yeah. Okay, that's Jasmine. You can see the eye problem here, Rob. That's it. <laughs> that's all right, it's just being a meerkat. On Sydney's outskirts, Rob has his hands full with a pair of spirited meerkats that need immediate treatment. I can see that, which looks like a two through the abscess. Yeah. Mere cat. It is not a domesticated cat. It is not a domesticated animal. And everyone thinks of them as soft little, yeah, cute little guys, but they're not like that either. They enjoy biting and scratching. They've got long nails. So you've got to be a bit careful when you're handling them. That's Rose. This is the one that's got the leg, and it's a right front leg. Jasmine and Rose were brought in from a nearby wildlife sanctuary after operations manager Donna noticed health issues with the two nine-year-olds. Yesterday we noticed that Rose was lame on her front right leg and she couldn't put any weight on that foot. And Jasmine has had a bit of an ongoing issue with an abscess on her face and Rob's been monitoring that. You see the scar there from the abscess that keeps coming up? The two meerkats are recent arrivals at the Zambi Wildlife Retreat, where Rob has treated a wide variety of exotic creatures, large and small, over many years. There you go. Look, while we've got hold of her, we're going to take her straight in and we're going to give her an anaesthetic and x-ray straight away. It's yep. otherwise just going to traumatise her more and more. Yeah. Okay, okay. let's go. Yep. yep, I've got her. Even a brief initial examination reveals Rose has a major injury in her front right leg. 
It's okay, Rose. We want to fix your foot up, darling. To get a clearer picture of just how bad the damage is, Rob sedates his feisty patient. There we go. When they can't weight bear, it's always a risk of a fracture. That's the worst scenario. So I'm hoping that maybe it's a sprain or something. We'll wait and see. Ready to go? Oh my gosh. I know. I can it's really see. bad. Yep. Yeah, they don't need to be a vet to look at that and no. say that is no, terrible. That's a bad break. What we've got here is a printout of the three-dimensional model. Are you wanting to look too, Bruno? <laughs> At Southpaws in Melbourne, James is explaining to Andrew and Cassandra how he intends to fix the severely twisted front foot of their Bernadoodle Bruno. He's got such a complex deformity in that leg once we started to look closely at the CT scan. I really didn't think that we were going to be able to correct that in the, in the more conventional ways with a high enough level of accuracy that I was, I was totally happy with. You know, you might look at how severe this deformity is and think, okay, well, there's, there's nothing we can do. We might have to do something drastic like, you know, amputate his leg or even put him down. It turns about quality of life. Effectively, we've removed the bottom part of the radius. James will use 3D modelling to correct the complex abnormality. So this is literally the 3D printed model and this is where the technology is so cool because we can take that image and we can make it into something that we can have in our hands and use. And then we can take the cutting guides and we can literally put that cutting guide on top and know that in surgery, I've got everything completely lined up and completely accurate. So this plate is specifically designed for him and his bones, and this is gonna make the surgery really nice, and it's gonna give us every chance of having a good outcome. Okay? Thank you. All right, great to see you again, guys. Great to see you, James. Thank okay, you. Thank no you problem, so much. no problem. All right, Bruno. Hi, Bruno. Hey, buddy. Hey, Bruno. Hey, buddy. Hey, Bruno. You wanna come with us? Hey? Okay. 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 All, right. All right, we're off. All right. Thanks, see ya. guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> We've just said goodbye to Bruno. It feels pretty sad actually, but like it feels pretty exciting that after spending the last year with his bung leg, we hopefully get to see him fix and to be a proper puppy again. You'd be worried today, Bruno. He's a really important part of our family. But as the one-year-old gets ready for the high-tech, high-risk surgery, the uncertain outcome is taking an emotional toll on his adoring owners, Andrew and Cassandra. <laughs> oh, this is really bad, Donna. This is really, really bad. On the outskirts of Sydney, X-rays have revealed nine-year-old meerkat Rose has a compound fracture in her front right leg. There's two bones there. I can see that. And it snapped through both of them really badly. Oh no. That's my greatest fear. Actually, it's even a bit worse than I initially thought because there's a little bit of free bone near the elbow as well, which I don't like. Oh, this is a really bad break. They have two bones in the forearm, radius and ulna. Both bones are fractured and other pieces of bones are smashed. We've got to make some decisions about how we're going to try and fix this. We've got three options. Plate could maybe work. The other one would be what's called external fixation, which will have pins coming out the side. You have to open them up, operate, put pins in yes. crosswise and line it up. The other alternative is to uh, try a cast. Uh, we'll have to change the cast, I think, probably every couple of weeks. It depends. If it gets wet, we have to change it straight away or we'll lose the leg. Donna from the wildlife retreat where Rose lives fears the worst for the injured little meerkat. Look, I was in, in the room when that shot of the x-ray came up and it stood out as plain as day that it was broken. And my heart sank. It's the worst case. I didn't want to see that. It's really swollen, Donna. Have a feel. I did notice that swollen. Yeah, oh little, yeah, yeah, you can feel that. Just from all, There's a, a build up of fluid. Just the, the trauma. And the just trauma all the trauma, from yeah. It. Muscles have torn and things like that. God, they're a tough little animal. Yeah. Let's go with the cast, push okay. it in position, cast it, and we'll just review it I'll in a couple of weeks. Okay. This ain't gonna be easy. Okay, Annie, come on in. Let's give, let's give this our best shot. 
The biggest worry for both Rob and Donna is that while her leg heals, Rose will need to be separated from the other meerkats at the wildlife retreat. Can't make it too heavy for it, but it's gonna be heavy enough to hold it. Sadly, she could struggle to survive on her own. They've evolved as a family group, as a mob. So a, a mob for meerkats is vital. It's quite a complex social structure and it's very beautiful to watch. Do you hope she can walk on one leg, eh? That's the thing, we don't know. It's all right. In North Yorkshire, in England, Louisa is treating a Staffordshire Bull Terrier cross that's extremely anxious. Good girl. Today we've got Lilo. She is very nervous, which is why she's muzzled. Poor Lilo was attacked by some dogs when she was younger and it's made her really, really anxious. So for safety, she does wear a muzzle and we approach her with caution to not make her feel any more anxious than she already is. Mm -hmm. She doesn't really like many people at the moment. Lilo is so apprehensive, sedating the five-year-old earlier was a challenging task. Yeah, but she's, she's had half of it, she needs a bit more. It's all right. She is such a big dog and she's very frightened. She's really, really fighting the sedation. Come here, sweetheart. All right, she's frightened. All right, good girl, ready? I'm going up here, one, two, three. Done. Good girl. It's really difficult when you've got pets that are anxious and frightened and the manifestations of that can be aggression. And we do try and dedicate a lot of our time to help the aggressive pets. I might just have to give her a little bit of something extra. I'll give her a little bit more and we'll see how she goes with that. Because Lilo is still on edge. Just a little bit more. Louisa gives her another dose of sedative before treating her for the painful ear condition she came in for. I don't want blood to go everywhere. Lilo's got an oral hematoma, which is a buildup of fluid underneath the ear here. And it's caused by her chronic ear infections, bless her. And as you can see, she's really irritated by it. The plan is that we're going to try and drain it to take away the irritation. But because she is nervous aggressive and isn't easy to handle, I'm going to have to do a procedure where there won't be that many stitches in, which I'm going to put a drain in that can be easily taken out rather than a procedure where there'll be lots of stitches to come out. But it'll make her feel much better and then we're going to get on top of her ear infection as well at the same time. This is just a local anaesthetic Freezy sprays to hopefully mean that she doesn't feel what I'm about to do. Louisa is reluctant to administer a general anaesthetic, which would require her highly anxious patient to stay longer in hospital. We just want to get her awake as quick as possible and home. So we've opted to do it under a heavy sedation, so she shouldn't be able to feel what we're doing. Right, Hannah? Yes, yeah. ready for spillage. Okay. All good? Okay, let's get into it. In Melbourne's southeast, James and his team are getting ready to operate on young Bernadoodle, Bruno. James is only one year old, so I'm not expecting too many problems from an anaesthetic point of view. They'll use high-tech 3D modelling to correct a severe deformity in the young dog's right foreleg. And so when we finish, that leg's going to stick straight out. Even though we're trying to do this complicated plan and, and make sure these leg goes straight, there's always going to be a lot of apprehension and worry about what if it doesn't work and what if we can't fix it. So this is an extra barrier effectively just to try and minimise potential for bacteria to kind of come up and get into the surgical incision. Okay, ready to go. This is certainly a nice big incision. They're just getting exposed now down to the level of the main joint in the wrist where we're going to make our osteotomy. Cutting the bone, with this type of procedure where we're working low down on the leg, there's not a lot of soft tissue coverage over the implants that we're going to put into the leg. After removing the soft tissue surrounding the part of the bone to be removed... Do we have a guide somewhere? James employs the first 3D model, which will help him make the crucial cuts to the bone. So the guy that we're using has a cutting surface, so we're going to put our saw on and cut against that. The really important thing with these cutting guides is that we get right down onto the bone. 
where they need to be placed because they've been designed specifically for Bruno based on his exact anatomy. We can actually slide this on and confirm that we've actually got that alignment pretty nice. These guides, they're incredible. This is part of the job that I really love because it's kind of art meeting science in some regards and we can really bring both aspects together and create something that's kind of awesome and give Bruno a whole new lease on life. I'm going to start by putting a couple of pins in there. If you keep that leg there, Yui, can you keep that pushed on? So we're putting these pins in so that this guy can't rotate around at all. Now just make our cut through the radius. So this is like the first really critical part of the procedure. That's the piece of bone that we've removed. So we've kind of passed the point of no return now. Now we're gonna put our second guide on. This one goes over the top of the first. The second 3D model will help the team attach a metal plate, joining the two severed bones in Bruno's leg. So now we're gonna put it on the leg and see how everything's gonna line up. So that's all gonna come over that way. But although it's custom designed for Bruno, it's not fitting as it should. There's an ever so slight gap at the osteotomy when I get this plate on. Tissues are just impinging things a little bit or whether the cuts are slightly off. A little bit concerned. It's causing me a bit of anxiety. It's always hard when you're in surgery because when things don't go well, it's, it's very easy to get inside your head and, and start ask them a few questions and you know you don't want to listen to that guy. <laughs> You've got to focus on what you're doing and making sure you stay in a good frame of mind. What we're looking at is the alignment where we're trying to get these two cut surfaces back together. We're not sure that it's going to work. It'll be interesting to see how she reacts to having this foreign thing on her. It's going to be tough keeping this on. She's not going to be happy. In Sydney's west, Rob is placing a cast on Meerkat Rose to repair a compound fracture in the nine-year-old's front leg. I guess if this doesn't work, we'll have to go for the surgery. Yeah, I think so. That's all we've got left. Rob and Rose's carer Donna hope surgery can be avoided and that the cast will enable the broken leg to heal. Yeah, I mean, she's going to have to learn to balance going to be the hard thing as well. Well, you know how good they are on their back legs? They stand on their back legs yeah. well, most I mean, that's of the it. day. So that's they're... what gives us most hope, that most of the weight's in these big, big rear legs. It's the front leg of the meerkat, which doesn't bear as much weight. They have big muscles in the back legs that do all the weight bearing. So hopefully if we can put a strap on it, and if she leaves it alone, that's going to be a big challenge. Do you want to go grab some Vicks Vaporub or Metzel or something? Yep, Just go grab it. Rob has an ingenious plan to stop Rose from chewing the cast and undoing all his hard work. Oh, good. You got that? Very good. This helps a lot with her not wanting to touch it. They don't like the eucalyptus smell. So. With any amount of luck, it might just deter her from thinking about it. With Rob's first patient treated and safely put away... You're a beautiful little girl, aren't you? Eh? The attention turns to fellow nine-year-old Jasmine, who's been battling a nasty ongoing infection on one side of her face. OK, let's have a look. What's going on with this little girl? Yesterday we noticed her other side of her face looked infected and her eye was closed up. So it looks a little bit more serious than we thought. And you can see there where she's had yeah. an abscess we, under this one, yeah. which it blew up and then burst, but now it seems to have spread to the other eye. That doesn't make sense. You know, they've got their heads buried in sand all day. Yep. So you wonder what to well, get into their eyes. Lots of stuff. Yep. Donna was worried that the abscess had spread, but that it doesn't spread from one side to the other. Abscesses don't do that. So I'm just wondering what is going on. Uh, this is trauma. 
some infections entirely different to the other one. She's been in the fight and it's really... Oh, that's a nasty bite there. This is a really bad lesion because it, I she, see. she's destroyed the, the bottom eyelid. Oh dear. Um, that is really, really bad for her. It means digging, she, she can't go into dirt and dig for the rest of her life because she won't be able to control. But that's a meerkat's life oh, though. I know that, I know that. The eyelid is totally torn away and without that she can't close the eye properly and these are an animal that dig and go underground. If she can't close the eye, she'll end up losing that eye totally. I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. Oh dear. It's causing me a bit of anxiety. I'm not sure that it's going to work. In Melbourne, James is having trouble attaching a metal plate to correct a deformity in one-year-old Bruno's leg. There's an ever so slight gap that's not come together as smoothly as I was expecting. Maybe it was me being a bit optimistic. The plate needs to connect two sawn off leg bones. If it doesn't fit, the surgery will fail. There's so many moving parts until you start locking bits down to where it needs to go. It's hard to kind of see how it's all going to come together. We've cut through the bone and now we've got to try and align these two bone segments. But in terms of trying to bring it together, it looks like it's going to not potentially work out completely. So to get the implants fixed to the bones properly, we've got a bit of work to get there. James makes several adjustments, hoping it will solve the problem. I feel really good about that now. We've got a little small gap here at the osteotomy, which is what we'd expect. So I think we're good. We can push ahead now with a lot more confidence. So that is the last screw to go in. Okay. Quietly sweating a little bit then when it wasn't really coming together. <laughs> I'm feeling better about it. I was concerned, but I think we're actually looking brilliant. The function is remarkably good and you should start to bear weight on it a little bit as soon as tomorrow. So we can see already how much straighter this leg is. So before that leg was flexing in completely the wrong direction. So now everything's lined up through the paw, through the elbow and through the shoulder. Obviously you can't bend his wrist anymore because that's where we fused it. But I think that's going to work out really well. I'm really, really pleased. After a few worrying moments, Bruno has a brand new leg he'll barely notice when he wakes from surgery. We always project our human emotions onto the patient and worry about how they're going to go. But they're amazing. I think sometimes they wake up and they're more worried about where their dinner's going to be rather than you know, what's happened to their leg. Yeah, I'm really, really happy. The legs come back together really nicely. There was a bit of a hairy moment in the middle of the surgery once we made all the cuts and trying to get the plate aligned. But I'm really, really pleased. So I think um, we'll wait for the post-operative x-rays, see what they look like. But at this stage, yeah, really, really happy. Three, two, While Bruno recovers, James will wait anxiously for x-rays to confirm that all has gone well with his young Bernadoodle patient. Hey, Bruno. You had a big day, buddy. You can have a big rest tonight. She's destroyed the bottom eyelid. Oh dear. Um, that is really, really bad. In Sydney's west, Rob has given Donna the devastating news that Jasmine the meerkat has lost an eyelid. The whole eyelid here has come off. Whether I can stitch that back on and hope it holds and grafts, I don't know. But without that bottom eyelid, she cannot go digging. And that's her whole life of a meerkat. We'll give it a try. Oh. So what I'm endeavouring to do now is to stitch the flap from the eyelid back onto the skin itself and create a lower lid again for this animal. I don't know how we'll go because it's just hanging on. As long as that flap doesn't die, then we've got a chance. Gosh, they've got that tough skin, I'll tell you now. Come on, just bent the needle on that one. Yeah, they look like such delicate little creatures. They're the friendly as. They're tough and they're, they're tough and they bite. <laughs>
Rob confronts another unexpected challenge as he tries to reconstruct Jasmine's eyelid. Don't want the whiskers there. Get away. There we go, we stitched the whisker back in. The weird thing is we're using very, very fine material. It looks like the whisker and then the whiskers are getting in the way. And every time I put a stitch in, there's a whisker, so I have to take that out. There's a whisker again, getting in the way. Trying to avoid the whiskers is really the hardest part. But you know what? It's coming together, Donna. I can see if I had no doubt in your capabilities, Rob. <laughs> I've watched you for many years. You've done some miracle things. Okay, we've got an, a bottom eyelid of sorts now, better than what we had before. Let's have a good look at this now. Okay. So I've sort of put that together as best I can at this stage. I may have to do more reconstruction work, but the first thing I want to see is if the graft takes. Now it's time to have a look at the abscess on the other side. It does look like a tooth. And it keeps flaring up. It'll flare up maybe once a month. But as Rob is about to treat the recurring abscess on Jasmine's face, it's waking up. She begins to stir from the anaesthetic. Put the nitrous back on. Oh boy. Good girl. In Yorkshire, Louisa and Nurse Hannah are about to drain fluid from the infected ear of anxious dog Lilo. Right, Hannah. Yes. Ready for spillage. Okay. The ear has local anaesthetic in it, but it's sometimes the pressure that they can feel, so I'm not concerned that I think she's painful. I feel really bad. I don't want to turn this to a general anaesthetic. Lilo's severe reaction means Louisa must reconsider her options. So what, let's open it up for her. Louisa opts instead to pierce the ear to make the procedure as quick and painless as possible. Because she's only heavily sedated, we're, we're a bit more limited on what we want to do because I obviously don't want to hurt her. She can't really feel anything, but we can't do as much as what we would have liked compared to a dog that was fully under anaesthetic. But it's always me to empty it all out, and then ideally, I need to try and flush the inside. So she'll feel better after that. So let's take all of this off. The next step is to remove uncomfortable blood clots wedged between the skin and the cartilage in the ear. Let's put that over your little lugs. The ear has been really, really bothering her, and she's just very, very oversensitive around that area. So it makes life a bit harder. And she does grumble and she does growl at me, but I don't take it personally. After flushing out the ear, I'll just clip it and then I'll leave it. Louisa inserts tubes to allow the damaged ears to continue to drain for the next few days. The last bit's done now, it's done, it's done, it's done. So we're just putting a couple of stitches in and then these stitches, when the ears stop draining, we can pull out. Um, but just being really gentle because she's not fully asleep, so. And then we're almost done. So we clean the ear, put the drains in. I think we've done pretty good. So fingers crossed it doesn't come back. All right, sweetheart. Good girl, Lilo. Yeah. Good girl. still awake, can you believe that? In Sydney's West, Rob has had to increase the anaesthetic level for meerkat Jasmine so he can treat a bad abscess on her face. So this is the abscess here. If we look at the teeth, it's that canine, that one oh, there. Oh, I see, that's worn right down. That's worn right down yeah. there. I think that's causing the abscess and it's a bit rotten. We might take that tooth out. It's so worn down, she can't use it anyway. It's dead, you can see it's brown and, and yellow. We've got to remove it, otherwise this abscess will keep coming back all the time. What we've got is a rotten stump of a canine. That's all that's left, it's broken and it's trying to get any purchase on it. It's not easy.
These go right up. Done. Done. Good job. Okay, let's wake her up. Now that we've got this tooth out, we certainly can't have a digging in the dirt, not with that eye. She's gonna to have to be somewhere where there's no dirt and she just cannot dig. I hope that doesn't depress her too much, but there's no choice. We have to try and get this healing together all over again. Okay, just about awake, Donna. Yes, being such social animals, yeah. the thing will be reintroducing them back into the mob, but we'll have them in an area with a screen where they can still see each other, smell each other, yep. um, just can't get to each other. So hopefully that'll keep it nice. It's always a risk separating them from their mob. Meerkats have a very social grouping, but I think we'll keep Rose with Jasmine, so that sort of will help. Rose, are you all right, Jasmine? Good thing you girls are best friends. It is going to be a long road for these two little critters, you know. They're not going to be allowed to dig, not allowed to do this, have ointments put on, etc. But they've got the best possible nurses and care with Donna and her crew out there. I'll be very happy to just keep checking them every few weeks. When you care for a lot of animals, it's always something. And it's always stressful, sometimes heartbreaking. But we do our best, so let's hope. It's all we can do. X-ray! In Melbourne, Bruno is undergoing scans to confirm if reconstruction surgery on the young dog's deformed leg has been successful. So looking now at the post-operative image, we can see the elbow is nice and straight. Um, up here, and then we've got the plate coming on and we've got the carpus nice and aligned. The images are exactly what specialist surgeon James was hoping to see. So I've got my elbow looking nice and straight, coming to the radius and elbow, and I can see all the four metacarpal bones nice and clearly there. So I've gotten rid of that rotation and that bowing that had developed. We've completely corrected that. We've got a nice straight leg, so at this stage I'm very, very happy. James calls Bruno's devoted owners, Andrew and Cassandra, with the fantastic news. Hey Andrew, it's James here calling from Southpaws. How are you? Good, thanks. So we've finished with surgery. I've just had a look at the x-rays. Everything went really, really well. At this stage, really couldn't be happier. Yeah, that's great news. Yeah, yeah. So all good and he's in recovery now and, and doing nicely. Oh, great. Great. Awesome. After months of anxiety leading up to today's surgery, the successful outcome is met with elation by mum, dad, and Bruno's best friend, Raphael. You get to pull his tail again, kick him in the face. Yeah, good times. <laughs> Quite emotional. Big relief. Yeah. I can't wait to yeah. see him just run down a field and not be like limping halfway through or not yeah. able to run the full field because yeah. he's in pain. <laughs> kiss, Bruno, kiss. Good boy. <laughs> Our family can grow yes. together. Yeah. yeah and hopefully he's going to have a really long life with us, like 12, 14 years. Yeah, and that'd be great. Yeah, won't know any different with that poor. Six weeks after their visit to Rob's clinic, meerkats Jasmine and Rose are both recovering well. After a period of quarantine to allow Rose's broken leg and Jasmine's damaged eyelid to heal, both are happily back with the rest of their meerkat mob, doing the things meerkats love to do. Eight weeks after reconstruction surgery on his leg, Bruno, come over. Good boy. One-year-old Bruno is making an amazing recovery. Bruno's doing really well. It's like yeah. he's never even had surgery. Where are you going? Oh, having a poo. <laughs> Even from a couple of days after the surgery, he was trying to like run around and using that ball like nothing ever changed. Yeah. He's now fully weight-bearing on the leg. And his adoring family are ecstatic at how well he's embracing his new lease on life. Having him happy and back to normal is great. I like, can't even describe how amazing yeah. it is just to see him be a normal puppy again and have a leg that he's not always in pain or not yeah. having to worry about. 
you know, am I going to be able to walk this far or do I need to protect myself and can I move my leg this way? Yeah. Um, he's new confidence when he walks. He just has, yeah, yeah, Bruno's got a new <laughs> truck. He just has a really confident new lease on life. Yeah. He's just a different dog. Yeah, he is. Yeah, Bru Bru, we love you. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way. That way.